Uh, let's start it. <laughs> Boom, watch fam. What is up, watch fam? My name is Michael, and that's that's very loud. You're speaking very loudly. Aren't that's, you? that's how I speak every video. Jesus. What is up, watch fam? My name is Michael, and that is. Christian. And he's the curator of the Theo and Harris Watch Shop. Someone the goes, wait, I, I, can someone help me understand? Who curates the Theo and Harris Watch Shop? <laughs> All right, before we jump into the questions, um, wristwatch check. What are you wearing? I am wearing a Coke GMT that's in the shop right now, actually. On the Bruno strap. Mm -hmm. It's a uh, brown suede strap in Italy. It's also a really good balance. Obviously, this is not a dive watch, but right. usually, like, if I was going to get the Samariner, you know, I don't want to toss it on a leather band just because it's a dive watch. It's meant to be swam with. GMT is a really nice kind of, I guess, compromise because you're not supposed to swim with it. So you can get that same bezel case yep. with a leather strap and not feel like an idiot. I agree. I'm mm -hmm. wearing uh, my personal date just, uh, 1601, 1977. My first, I bought this six years ago, basically last month. Wow. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. I'm really emotional. If you guys want to watch the full video where I talked about this watch and how much it means to me, um, the link is down below. Check it out. Great, let's do it. All right, so anyways, we're going to start off with uh, two big questions, or I guess two big topics, and then we're going to go into some audience questions and see where that takes well, us. Yes, let's let's do it. Well, so so the first thing I wanted to talk about mm -hmm. um, was Philips Auction House announced uh, a couple of headlining pieces that are coming, that are coming up, um, one of which which blew up. It was all over the news, or the watch news, rather, mm -hmm. um, is is another Paul Newman Daytona. Phillips from day one when, when they when they had their inaugural auction a couple of years ago, they've been a big deal. But the Paul Newman auction took them totally far beyond the realm of where anyone else thought that they could possibly go. Yeah, they blew up. They blew up. They sold the watch for like $17.5 million. It was in every major publication. It was actually news. Mm -hmm. Not watch news. Was, that's that's the biggest thing. Actual news. Mm -hmm. um, the result was absolutely incredible. No one predicted it. I was actually in the room. It was fantastic. So super, super crazy energy. Um, but... What's so cool about it is that it was the Paul Newman auction. The Paul Newman auction. Not Paul Newman's watch. A Paul Newman auction. <laughs> this to me, and so so what they're auctioning off is a, is a non-Paul Newman Daytona, one that Paul Newman himself did wear. Mm -hmm. um, it is not a Paul Newman Daytona in the sense that the dial is not the exotic dial, which has now been called the Paul Newman. Right. And a lot of people, you know, looked at it and said, what the f***? Mm -hmm. we, you guys already did the Paul Newman Daytona. To me, it reminded me of like you know you've got you've got the rail thing, then like the Costco Kirkland version. Yep, yep, yep. Um, except the difference is the Costco Kirkland version is actually usually pretty good. Right. Um, this is a great Daytona, but who gives a crap? I mean, who who you know, it, it's it, to me it's taking the sting out of the original piece of news. And I think Phillips True. is setting themselves up for failure. I think I could be wrong. I, I, in fact, I'm probably wrong. If I had to bet on it, I bet this watch will get an incredible result. I, it could even break a million dollars. That would be incredible. Um, but by anyone else, you know, this would be a, I think, an underwhelming, all things considered. Oh yeah, uh, result. I mean, can you imagine you buy a watch for seventeen point four million dollars, and then a year, two years later, it's like two years. Two yeah. years later, you see on the news a Paul Newman <laughs> is going for auction, and you're like, what? Right. I just I bought the I Paul just did Newman. It. And what does it say on the back? This is the funniest part. <laughs> so the, the original one is the, the, the Paul Newman. Paul Newman is drive carefully, me, which is like so sweet. It's kind of touching. Like, yeah. like don't die, mm -hmm. me. <laughs> and then the Costco version. I don't remember what it is. I think it's drive slowly, me. <laughs> Like, no, that, is the, most, that no. is the most generic brand. You know, in Canada, they have stuff that just says like milk and it's white label. That's exactly <laughs> that's it. what it is. Yeah, it's it's you know, um, it's it's a mess. I think I think it's a mess. Um, I it think is. it's wrong. I haven't I haven't spoken to a collector that has thought it was a good idea yet. Mm -hmm. um, that being said, listen, there are very. I was gonna say geniuses. That's not necessarily fair. There are very smart people. I love how the Phillips people are gonna be watching this. They're gonna be like, "Wow, he almost called me a genius." And he actually went out of his way to correct him. And correct me. No, you're, you're you know, you're, you're very smart. Um, and there are very very smart people. I I bet that they've thought about it from different angles and they thought about it more than we have. They're probably right. This will probably be very successful for the company. Um, it'll they'll make a ton of money on it. Mm -hmm. They'll get a ton of uh, publicity. It's probably good for them. But to me, it is a bit of a a fart. I think, yeah. it's, I, think it's, I think it's a bit of a, yep. you know. Uh, definitely. Next topic, Hodinkee. So recently, we basically found out that um, LVMH has a stake 
in Hodinki. It does hint at the fact that LVMH is gonna blow up something with their watches, or that they have been, just steadily trying to raise the uh, quality of their products or trying to like get more name to the them awareness. or something like that. Awareness, mm-hmm. exactly. And you know, who better to do it than Theo and Harris? But second to that, Hodinki. Damn straight. Damn straight. Yeah, it, it's interesting. You know, LVMH is kind of like the third watch conglomerate. L- LVMH is, you know, the conglomerate, you know. Oh, yeah. Uh, it, like the one. But in watches, they're the third, right? It's basically, you know, Swatch and Richemont and then them. Um, that being said, yes. This investment in Hodinkee, and it was their it was their VC arm. It wasn't it wasn't LVMH, but it was their VC arm. It's mm-hmm. Still them. Uh, uh, it would hint that they're trying to take their watch department more seriously if they're buying up or buying into the you know the the one of the main, if not the main, you know, media outlet in watches. Um, so it kind of does give us a window into what they're doing. Um, from the Hodinkee end, I mean, um, my only problem, I, I love Hodinkee. I'm a big Hodinkee oh, fan. Yeah, same, I'm into same, watches yeah. because of Hodinkee. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm not the type of person, like many people in the watch industry, many people in general, many people that are watching this, I'm sure, um, that is that is like a jealous, angry person. I'm just not. Um, I think True. it's fantastic that they've succeeded. I think it's fantastic that Ben's made millions of dollars. It's, it's Awesome. That's exactly what everyone else here is trying to do. Mm -hmm. Um, But many people, they'll just, oh, well, you know, that's not fair how he did it. Relax. Okay. Let's all understand where our criticisms are coming from. And that being said, um, it does bother people legitimately without jealousy. It does bother people legitimately that Hodinkee passes itself off as a, you know, like an objective journalist, you know, uh, when really, of course, everything is, you know, not that everything is bought, but uh, they're they're not muckrakers, you know. These people, you know, they're, they're either paid to have certain opinions, paid not to have certain opinions. Mm-hmm. That, that does not mean that they lie. That's, that's, that's not the point. It's lying by omission. It's sugarcoating. It's, it is a little bit dishonest. Um, whereas if they pitch themselves like we do, not an objective journalist, as people who are trying to sell this thing, mm-hmm. you know, then all is forgiven. People are okay with being sold to when they are told they're being sold to. Transparency, exactly. Right. Um, but I think that people are also living in a bubble. You know, Mm -hmm. look at the news in general now, not just watch news. The news is no longer objective. It's so loaded, you know, period. Mm -hmm. Every major news outlet is totally full of shit. So, so why do we expect anything different from our watch journalists? I mean, but, but when it seems like you're sneaking, when it seems like you're not being, you know, totally, totally transparent, uh, or when you're objectively not being totally transparent, you know, people look and, and say, well, which opinion should I trust of yours? Mm-hmm. You know, why weren't you just truthful the first time? Why did I have to catch you? And I and I get it. I mean, that being said, um, again, I don't, I can't think of a time how Dinky's like lied. Um, right. You know, they they wax poetic about certain things that they have a vested interest in, just like we do. It's like everyone, everyone does that, right? Mm-hmm. And and that's totally fair game. Um, as long as as long as you're being earnest that you have an interest in it. So. Anyway, they got a bunch of kickback. So many people hate Hodinkee. Some for real reasons, I think legitimate reasons, some out of just sheer jealousy. Um, and that's just, I, I'm sure that the Hodinkee staff would agree with me um, because that's just the fair thing to say. But um, anyway, that, that, that's a, that was a big piece of news this week. That was wild. But anyways, we did ask for some questions on the Instagram and I'm basically, I'm just going to fire them at you, just Christian, and we'll just see how it goes. The biggest question that we got, actually a few of the questions that we got yeah. is about your straps. One of them is just, you know, it's kind of general, but can you use it on a Cartier Santos? I kind of want to flip that just into being like, go behind the strap methodology a little bit, just because it's expanding. We added like, what, 15, 20? Yeah, we have a ton of straps now. In the past month. So yeah, you can obviously add one on the Cartier Santos, I think has the appropriate lug width. Uh, Well, it depends on on which Cartier Santos you're talking about. But uh, even if it doesn't, you can have one custom made. Uh, Yes, you can absolutely wear a strap on, on a Cartier Santos. So... Go into depth just on the straps a little bit more. Yeah, basically we have three different you know, strap manufacturers, one in Italy, one in France, and one in the United States of America, red, white, and blue, baby, rock, flag, and eagle. Mm. Um, yeah, it's, they're all important to me. They, they all fill a different kind of spot in our market, right? Um, the, the Italian straps are more approachable. Um, the American straps are American, somewhere in the middle. And then the, our French straps are these just like absurd luxury straps. They're all fantastic, but the French ones are just the premium, premium, premium cut, and uh, they, they are the most expensive. But I wanted to fill all of that in because mm-hmm. The Thielen Harris strap shop was a little bit, you know, I thought, 
uh, it didn't have enough. It, it wasn't dynamic enough. It just had just had the super 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 expensive stuff. Um, but I don't feel that way about anything. I don't feel that way about shoes. I don't feel that way about anything. So I wanted to round out the collection, and we did. Uh, so yeah, pick up a Theo and Harris watch strap uh, now. Basic basically now. I'll, you know what? I'll even give you guys. Um, I'll even give you guys ten percent off if you use the code um, uh, Michael. Use the code ah. Michael. Uh, after watching this video, you get ten percent off uh, any of our any of our leather goods. Can't be unpredictable. Who says I can't be? Spent? That was unbelievable. That's the most spontaneous I've ever done. Um, women are always telling me I'm never spontaneous. I, well, guess, guess who just gave off 10% at the leather shop? Yeah, right. That's what I'm telling you. You, you, you have to plan everything out. You know, it's not spontaneous. I, well, I, I did give away 10% on Type the Type in Michael on TheoandHarris.com. <laughs> oh, okay. This is a good one. Regardless of Theo and Harris, what would your dream position be at any company? Um, That's a really good question. Uh, uh, definitely in, in focused marketing, definitely in storytelling, um, no doubt. That's 100% what I was born to do, and, and it makes me so, so happy to do it. Uh, it challenges me, and it just makes me feel amazing. So that, um, and I, I don't even know if I would do it in a specific industry. I, I would just be happy doing it for, honestly, the more challenging, the better. What I say all the time is, I would love if this ability, uh, um, this passion brought me into something that was difficult, like finance. Mm -hmm. You know, I say that all the time. I would love to story tell for a financial institution, because uh, it's so difficult to make anyone feel anything about finance, right? It, it's such a stale thing. Uh, why Watches are poetic. They're inherently, you know, beautiful and, and romantic. They lend themselves to romanticism. Um, finance doesn't. So I'd love to kind of take that challenge on my back. And and uh, and if I do, I'd like you to come along with me, Michael. And I'll be right there. <laughs> oh yeah. Right on the back of the horse. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. So this is actually a pretty interesting question, but form it however you will or think about it however you will. What's best, a beaten up date just or a clinically clean Prince Oyster date? So kind of breaking down Rolex and Tudor, would you rather get a junky Rolex or a clean Tudor? Um, oh, if it, if it comes down to qual quality, clean Tudor, no doubt. I, I always choose uh, quality of watch over, over brand, 100% uh, of the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would choose an, uh, an immaculate, even a watch you know, lower than two. I, I choose an immaculate vintage Gerard Perigo over a the date just um one one hundred percent. Yeah, that's a big thing. I feel like at that point you're kind of just you want the name Rolex more than you want a nice watch, which seems great while the watch is being yeah. shipped out to you, and then you get the watch and you're like, oh, what what's the what is this? What's the old expression? Uh, the cheapest version of something is often the most expensive. You know? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so exactly. True. Especially an older day just. Yeah. You're gonna lose it. Yeah. If if it's Instagram. a watch, and they are there are pretty ones out there. Oh know, yeah. But careful just just go for the less expensive watch yeah last one where do you where does the market on hype watches go from here <laughs> oh interesting i assume they mean like nautilus and submariners and things like that yeah the so, classic like this watch just went on sale it skyrocketed i don't know i don't know what right? happens what i don't know i mean it it jeez. It, oh, it's so dependent on the model mm -hmm. um the fact is the watch industry is growing so quickly that the that the increase in value can be sustained um it actually can everyone wants it to crash but the truth is that you know similar to a pyramid scheme we're actually recruiting more when i say we i mean the industry just the, just the industry is rec is recruiting more new qualified buyers um every day and and those qualified buyers will absolutely continue to keep this market uh, almost barren um, of, of, of inventory, you know, on the most desirable pieces. Um, my best advice to people is um, look beyond the hype. Sometimes the hype watches are fantastic and you want them for good reason, um, but look for things that are different. Look for things that uh, people aren't looking at. Um, that's how F.P. Jordan took off, right? F.P. Jordan wasn't always what it is today. Mm -hmm. uh, there are many people that bought F.P. Jordan watches uh, fairly cheap, you know, in the grand, in the grand scheme of uh, watches. Um, now in the last six months, they've tripled, quadrupled in many instances, right? So, mm -hmm. um, you know, I think really have your own taste. That's the only way to avoid this because I don't think it's getting any better. A couple of questions for you. Mm -hmm. One, um, of the projects we're working on right now, on the, on the short film projects we're working on, what are you particularly excited about? I'm super excited for the Omega shoe. That's a big one. That We did that with the Potter, which was really fun. Yep. And just, you know, that was kind of the first, like, go out into a different environment and just yeah. see how someone uses a watch besides talking about it at a desk. So that yep. was really fun. That was really fun. I agree. Mm -hmm. um, two, uh, you're, the, you're the film guy, right? You, 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 Michael literally came on board because I needed help with, with uh, 
executing and, and, and then building out the image mm -hmm. and then executing that because I don't know anything about actual execution in film. So uh, some movie recommendations, uh, not necessarily uh, like not, you don't you don't have to recommend a movie in, in its entirety, but mm -hmm. even an aspect of something. What do you find particularly interesting? That's a really good question. It could be in script. It could be in cinematography. Yeah, it could yeah, be in yeah. Anything. That's a really good question. So the biggest thing, obviously, is just I try to now I try to I didn't for a while, but just watch as many movies as I can because there's usually something where if you find a notable director like Noah Baumbach, who I really really like right now, Marriage Story and everything. Oh like yeah, that, incredible writer. And it's as I make films, you know, I try to incorporate those styles into my films, but just like. Finding out from him, like his overlapping dialogue, having like four or five characters all talking at the same time, like is inherently funny, which Martin Scorsese does that mm -hmm. a lot too. So yeah. There's a different aspect in every film. Sometimes it's the acting, but just watching films. And when you see something that stands out, you should definitely try to make note of why it stands out. Mm -hmm. I watched One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest yesterday. Yeah. And Jack Nicholson's performance there obviously is the show, but what kind of makes that such a big deal is the fact that everybody else is very toned down. So mm -hmm. his 100 seems like a 400 compared to everybody else's 50. Mm -hmm. So it depends on the movie, but just looking out for things that you're like, oh, that was something I noticed, and now I should definitely incorporate that into my daily life, into my writing, into my work, whatever it may be. Yeah, uh, that, that's really good advice. Um, I think that uh, when I look at like a review for, for a movie before I want to watch it, it's always like you always look it up first, right? Mm. Um, I, I try to, similar to wine, I try to like trust the people that were involved. Like, like for, for wine, it comes down to the importer. You trust the importer. You don't necessarily know the wine, but you know that this guy does import good wine. Mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of movies that I've watched that I didn't really particularly love. Um, I'm watching uh, interiors right now another Woody Allen movie mm -hmm. he's not in it though and um, it, it's been really interesting because the cinematographer was Gordon Willis Gordon Willis uh, who also did uh, uh, Manhattan right so mm -hmm. Manhattan is, is cinematograph cinem cinematographically perfect it, it's, it, it's a perfect film um, and interiors deals with so much less it basically takes place in the you know in the interior of, of homes you know mm -hmm. uh, but but still how were you able to do a lot with that much less? Exactly. It's easy yeah. to make the city look beautiful. Right, know, right. But um, it was really, really interesting. So yeah. anyway, uh, you know, obviously film is becoming more and more of a significant part of this company. So I hope that you guys enjoy uh, this journey, not just consuming the watch content, but also, you know, looking at storytelling and filmmaking and uh and uh, it's just it's just really really interesting. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Well, anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you, Michael, for uh, for I don't know sitting down. It's your job to sit down. I don't <laughs> yeah. Thank you for doing your job. Thank you for accepting you know? a paycheck. Yeah, right. no. nice of you. I hope you guys get our humor because yeah. like, I just look like a They're like what? Wow. wow, he's rude. I was going to say, I'm a nice boss, right? But then they would have said, wow, he made him say that. I'm not going to. No, 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 really no, no, nice no, no. Yeah. He's super nice. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, subscribe to our channel at Theo and Harris if you want a chance to win a Rolex. Follow me at Christian Zerone on Instagram if you want to double your chances for that Rolex. Mm -hmm. And um, that's it. I can't wait to see you all. I was thinking about events today. I can't wait to host events in the city again. I can't oh, wait. Oh, it's yeah. going to be a blast. Oh, yeah. It's going to be a riot. I can't. Uh, the why. Why do I always think about why? Anyway, I, goodbye. <laughs>